It's Wednesday morning and it's a bit of an exciting day today. Fernando is coming at 8 o'clock and he's going to finish putting on the rest of the ABC logos onto the, the vessel, uh, which will of course mean she needs to be pulled out of her slip, spun around 180 and pulled back into a slip so we can reach the other side of the boat. Uh, what else is happening today? Oh yes, a couple of you wanted to see the final uh, finished product with the davits, with the solar and the dinghy and the outboard and all that sort of stuff. So I'll show you that to you now and the, uh, the forward uh, pulpit um, stainless steel situation. Our stainless steel davit system is fixed onto either side of the back end of ABC by just five bolts. So we have actually got three uh, bolts in that one there and then just behind it there are two bolts and they've got really big thick backing plates on so I'm fairly confident that that's that's well fixed as you can see on the transom we've got two little gates that you can walk out to the swim platform um, so we made sure that the the davit was high enough to be able to walk through without having to stoop or anything obviously when we're uh, at anchor we won't have the dinghy there we'll have that lowered into the water um, so that won't cause a problem, but that gives us enough height to walk right through. You may have noticed there are two pink pool noodles stuck on the uh, stainless steel of the davits, and those are to prevent the uh, dinghy rubbing up against the steel and leaving a mark on the, uh, the rubber of the dinghy. There's also a separate little davit here for lifting the engine off the transom of the dinghy and onto its um, wooden block on the back railings here. Uh, it's still yet to be have the rope uh, run through it and the pulley system fixed, but yeah, that's that's going to give us a simple way of getting, <laughs> I use the word simple now, I haven't actually tried it in practice, it's only theory, uh, an easier way of getting the engine off the transom of the dinghy and put onto this block of wood here on the uh, push pit. On top of the davits we have four solar panels, uh, there are 150 watts each which gives us a total of uh, 600 watts. Uh, I'm not sure how many amps that gives us. We do have a, a little monitor device down at the nav station which tells us how much power is being pumped in or sucked out. So I've got to get to grips with that I guess. But right now it seems to be working very very well. Well first of all it's happened. Just a slight incident but nothing we won't live from. So the Mantis anchor is quite a lot bigger than normal anchors and we've got a slight issue where the pulpit is slightly in the way. So we might have to get the stainless steel guy in to uh, redesign the, the pulpit stainless steel. I have mentioned in my blogs and possibly in a couple of YouTube videos here and there that uh, we had issues with the anchor on the boat. Not really issues, more of a thought process. Um, there were two anchors on the bow roller and when we asked about this, the reason we were given was because the, the one big anchor was not enough to hold the boat. Now, seeing as we're going to be spending a lot of time at anchor, an anchor that does its job is very important to us. So we splashed out and bought ourselves a 38 kilo Mantis anchor, which was um, a reasonable price considering its uh, good qualities. But unfortunately, the price has escalated since we began the install of it in the fact that we now have to redesign our whole pulpit area. Um, which means the pulpit's been taken off the boat and sent off to the stainless steel guy to be modified, shall we say. So this is what the front of the boat looks like right now. Here you can see our new Mantis anchor. It's in itself is not big, but it does have this huge roll bar that goes across the top. And basically this top part was bashing into the underside of the pulpit. So without the pulpit, the front end of the boat looks a little bit odd. I am hoping that the modification of the pulpit is one of the last major things that we need to do to the boat before we can um, get her legally signed over to us and then begin the process of getting her registered and insured. And then once that's done, we can actually go and do some sailing, which would be fabulous. <laughs> I've got to say I'm very pleased with the turnaround time from Paco uh, with the stainless steel work here on the pulpit. The front end is what is being modified. It used to come out from here and meet back up here. 
but obviously um, that's the bit that got changed to allow for the size of the Mantis anchor. So now we've got these two support bars here, this one and this one, they're two new support bars. And of course that will allow the big Mantis anchor to sit where it wants to sit and everyone at the front of the boat will be happy and get along quite nicely. So if we open up the anchor locker, we can have a look here. Uh, the end of the shaft onto a galvanized uh, U-belt, uh, onto a small length of chain, I think it's about five or six uh, lengths of chain, onto a galvanized uh, swivel, and then onto the galvanized chain, which is 50 meters worth in the locker down there. And a little bit later on, either today or tomorrow, we're gonna to be adding another 50 meters of road uh, not won't be chain, it will be rope. So that'll give us a, a total of 100 meters of scope that we have available to us, depending on the depth of the anchorage we're at. Well, this is what our aft portside head looks like at the moment. It's been removed because there was a slight uh, salt water leak from the bottom in two little spots. And uh, the reason why it's salt water is because that's what's used on boats to flush toilets. Here in the workshop is the toilet. Um, the leaks were coming from down here somewhere, so the seals will be replaced there. But while it's in the workshop, what I've asked the guys to do is, if you look at the seat, it moves too easily on these hinges on the back here. Now normally you would just tighten up the, the bolts and that would be it. But unfortunately when somebody's sitting on the toilet and the, our vessel is underway, what happens is the lid will just automatically move from side to side like that. So to prevent the issue happening, what I've asked the guys to do is, oops, is if you see these plastic bits here, I want something about half that size screwed onto here and screwed onto here. So that when this seat closes down, it actually holds the toilet seat in position against the side of the bowl. And that should stop the swinging. As you can see, the toilet is now back in place in the aft port head, or the day head as some people like to call it. And Fernando actually managed to implement my idea with the little, I don't know what you'd call them, stoppers underneath the toilet seat, which look really good. And uh, they're very solid, so that'll stop the seat moving around when somebody's sitting on it for a number one or a number two uh, while the boat's underway. Today we're getting new logos put on the boat. So they're taking off the old name and they're putting on the new name. ABC, what a fantastic job, look at that. That's great, great, thank you. I tell you what, they're great workers, these guys. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> now Jose's got one under his belt, he can get the second one knocked out in about 30 seconds flat. Don't tell him I said that. Now it's time to switch the boat around to the opposite side and um, get the other side done. And the final thing in the sign writing is to remove the last name Corajero. Bye bye Corajero. Yeah. <laughs> And that's it, Corjero is gone, and uh, ABC now takes a place. Uh, still got the slight technicality of having to register the boat in the UK and deregister in Spain, but a name change is as good as anything as far as I'm concerned. driving to Cartagena and it's a bit exciting because we've got four places planned that we want to go and see. One is the ancient Roman theatre, another one is the Punic Wall and 
another one is the Museum of Aqua History and Boating History. And the other one is an old gun battery that's on the top of a hill with fantastic views. So let's drive and find out what we're going to see first. Because it all depends on parking. Oh, the parking problem <laughs> in Spain is fabulous. It's a challenge in its own right. <laughs> but we got plenty of water with us, so, you know, like, if we're driving around for a whole day before we get a park, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, we'll be good. Well, we've arrived at Cartagena and parking was an absolute breeze. Yeah, slipped right into an open slot, uh, just a five minute walk away from where we wanted to start our look around. Yes, and that is the Nautical Museum that we're going to see first. Yes. And it's right by the marina, check this out. And that is where we're going. How was that? It was great. It was pretty good, wasn't it? Yeah, it really was. They put so much detail and effort into all of the exhibits, didn't they? Yeah. It's um, quite interactive too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Only a small museum. But the, it's packed with information and there were little exhibits of, of Roman towns by the sea and it's brilliant. Yeah, it's really good. Right, well, let's get our bags and go, go to, to the, the next, next place. <laughs> Okay, stop number two is the Roman Theatre and we had a little glimpse as we came up to here and it's looking pretty stunning. So let's go see it. Definitely going to be getting my 10,000 steps in today, that's for sure. piece of lavender. I don't know if I'm allowed to, but I couldn't go past the smell. Oh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I didn't expect this at the top.
it's got to that time of day where we've needed to put our hats on. It's it's getting a bit warm now. We're actually at the uh, the top of this walk that surrounds the ancient Roman theatre, and not a stone's throw away from it um, is a brand new kind of amphitheatre that's just being uh, refurbished by the looks of things. I wonder which one had the best acoustic qualities. I'm not sure what this guy is looking at, but I'm going to make one guess that that tree wasn't there when he started looking that way. That's where you go. I see no ships. <laughs> <laughs> you met? Um, this is uh, Carmen. Oh yes. Yeah. And she's, uh, what do you like about Carmen? Well she's a book reader. Yes. Um, so she, you know, I can appreciate that, you know, the inquisitiveness. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello Carmen. Hola. What time's the next bus, love? No? No. no. She's, she keeps herself to herself, doesn't she's she? Very, very insular, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, gotta go. It's lunchtime. After traversing the back streets of Cartagena, <laughs> we finally decided on a restaurant. This will need the one in the shade, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> okay. so, cheers. Lovely, lovely old city. Lots of back alleys and yeah, it's a mix of ancient and old and modern. And yeah, the thing I like is um, uh, <coughs> just being able to wander around and generally lose yourself in the town and wander up and down back alleys. It's always fun and interesting what you find. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, we did nearly lose ourselves, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite. I knew where I was all the time. I know, and I've got Google Maps. Um, yeah, it's um, it's just lovely because you know you got your little boutiques, you got your little cafes, and it's very, very pretty. It's, I mean, for a city, I could come and stay here. And there's a lot to look at too, isn't there? In terms of history, historical buildings. Mm. Mm. A lot of history. So that was lunch. Um, I tried pork cheek for the first time. It's quite nice. It's I'd have it again. What did you have? I had hake. Oh. It's very nice. Okay. Pop stuffed. So we're going to have to go for another big walk, which is a good thing because the next place that we're going to, the uh, Punic Wall, is that way, way over there. Oh God! Call me an ambulance. <laughs>
It cost us three euros fifty each to get in, and I wouldn't say it was exactly worth three euros fifty. No. There was a film um, which was in Spanish, but they did also have it in English, but they forgot to put it on for us. But they had subtitles, so it wasn't too bad. <laughs> um, and but the crypt itself was very interesting. So this aeroplane behind me is the one uh, that we see flying over the boat, over the marina every day virtually, and these are the guys who are the Spanish Air Force aerobatics team. That's the thing that they fly. We've seen some fantastic places today. Cartagena is a beautiful city and if you were staying there for a week there is plenty to see. And uh, it was really worth the 30 minute drive to come here to see the views and the, the fortress. Yeah, I would suggest if you come in here with kids, bring some torches uh, and let them run riot through the maze down below uh, with torches they will have such fun doing yeah, that yeah yeah and go um, to the toilet before you come yeah do that yeah okay so time go to go on. home <laughs> next week on sailing abc our dive compressor is delivered we clean the boat after the rain the fridge has issues we make insect screens and we redo the reflective strips for the life boys if you like our video give us a thumbs up subscribe and press the bell icon to be notified of future updates. Do share this with your friends as it really helps us out.